Good evening. We want to welcome everyone to tonight's budget hearing. I will ask the clerk to call the meeting, to announce the meeting, and to call the roll. A special session is being held on Thursday, July 17, 5 o'clock p.m., regarding the budget workshop. Immediately following the budget workshop, there will be an executive session, ninth floor conference room, regarding potential land um, acquisition. <coughs> roll call. Walters? Here. Philbrook? Here. Walker? Here. Townsend? Here. McKiernan? Here. Mugia? Maddox? Here. Kane? Here. Markley? Here. Holland? Here. All right, we have a full agenda tonight. Um, several things. I'll call your attention first to the agenda. We're going to lead off with we're going to lead off with the community development block grant information. Um, we'll then move to the Wyandotte County Fair discussion. Um, after that is public transportation. Um, I will again ask commissioners for future topics. Um, one of the things we had on for the for tonight was parks and mowing. And the parks and mowing has been bumped. Um, it shows right now on the 21st. My guess is that's going to be bumped down to the 24th. Um, that's a long conversation and it's complicated. And um, we have a lot of long, complicated conversations already. So we're trying to space them out in a way that makes sense. But we will keep you apprised of the topics and the order in which they will fall. But we're going to start off tonight with community development block grants. The, we've had a committee working on this um, and we appreciate the committee members it has been Commissioner Merguia, Commissioner Markley and Commissioner McKiernan is that right though no and Commissioner Townsend and Maddox so half the Commission has been working on this um, and they have brought forward some recommendations um, and we're going to go through that presentation first there are a couple of changes that we became aware of earlier today um, but we want the goal of tonight my goal of tonight is to complete our community development block grant conversation and move it forward for adoption with our regular budget um, we're not going to vote to adopt it tonight is that right we will adopt it as one of the motions we have a series of motions to adopt our budget and the CDBG will be one of them uh, but my hope is that we wrap up the conversation about this today um, and check it off the list. So with that, I'll turn it over to Doug Bach. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as we move into community development, I'll just note, as the mayor noted, the committee went forth, put forth their recommendation that came out in June, and then it's my job to finalize a recommendation as I build into the budget. It was not one of the items that I spent time on or highlighted during the initial presentation, though there are some changes in my recommended budget from what is actually came forth from the committee because those are steps I have to take somewhat to budget the balance and that'll be brought out in the uh, presentation tonight and you all can react and work with that as you deem appropriate. So with that, I'll turn it over. Unless the committee would like to have it, I will turn it over to Wilba and she'll walk through some of the sheets as we had um, initially presented and then we'll talk about some of the changes that's, that are a little different from what the committee had initially brought forth. So with that, I'll recognize Wilbur Miller, our Director of Community Development. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners, Doug. The first document that you see is the 2013 CDBG reappropriations. Uh, there was a special presentation, the first one on CDBG to the full commission on May 15th, and the Mayor and Commissioners requested that we submit a list of all of the reappropriations that we would like to have in this year's budget. This page is only for the community development block grant funds. It does not include the others that are on a separate page. The $966,000 is a part of the revised 2014 and proposed 2015 budget. <clears throat> the next page is all of the other grant funds that we received and their reappropriations. As you can see, some of them show that the activities are still ongoing and um, all of them show that the reappropriations must remain within the fund. There are carryovers for ongoing programs and contingencies on federal allocations. Taking the, back to the first reappropriations that is included in this budget, you see the 14-15 budget, which was the first budget that we had discussed 
and brought forward to the mayor and commissioners on June 26th that Commissioner Markley presented. <clears throat> this is probably the area where I'd note that as you'll see on the highlighted sections, the, the first two columns, 2014 and 15, as will be noted, was the recommendation. In the, the last two, or so is the county administrator for 14 and 15, um, we've highlighted that so it's very clear where the changes <coughs> are from what was originally recommended by the committee. Uh, the number one thing from a revenue difference was to change the Section 108 repayment. This is an area where we have funded this out of community development for a few years. Um, it is an obligation that, you know, according to our agreement, that we have to pay that back. Um, so we have that debt. I did not move it over into the general fund um, for this coming year. I left it in the uh, community development block grant area. So recognizing then needed to make a $280,000 shift between what would be in the 14 reappropriations and the proposed 15 budget in order to balance that equation. Um, you can see that's two areas um, largely made up the difference that that came into. Um, one was the demolition program. I put that back down to the funding level that we are currently at for 2014. So as you can see, the committee had originally recommended the um, 2014 level be 251 and then raise it in 2015. I return that back down to the 251 9 for 2015. So noting that in about every other program area we have in our operations, we have stayed at a status quo um, and leaving demolition at that same category. And then the balance of that really comes out of the um, emergency home repair fund program. However, we are able, so we took a little out of the the 14 reappropriation and then some out of the fifth and then a larger amount out of the 15 but we are able to fund that still at three hundred and eighty thousand dollars in 14 and 15 and then this will balance the equation to uh, to make this work and Doug just to clarify for those who haven't stared at this maybe as long as some of us um, this is the repayment for the Hilton Garden Inn project so when you hear us talking about that payment that that 108 payment we took sort of a, if I'm, if I'm saying this right, we took sort of a front end payment for, of CDBG dollars to fund that project in the beginning and we're slowly paying that back. So that's what this amount is for. Yeah, I believe the debt on this program moves through 2019 and then I believe it'll be, that it'll be repaid at that year. Yes. All right. One more slide. Yeah, the second slide. Okay. That's just the, the, the balance of the 14 and 15 budget where I show that in the highlighted that we're actually moving um, 140. Can you be sure to speak into the mic so oh, folks sorry. at home can hear? I show on the slide that in the uh, 14 budget, or excuse me, 15 budget includes 143,000 that we're taking from 14 and putting it into 15 to help accommodate that one change. Um, we did note that the reduction of our home repair budget means significant reduction to helping clients with their emergency home repairs, but that's just a note. And you'll note on this page, there's no difference in my recommended budget from what was proposed by the committee. I have a question. Yes. So that means that we're not funding livable neighborhoods? Is that what you're saying? No. What does that mean? I'm sorry. At the June 26th <laughs> meeting, we discussed that uh, the current contract with livable neighborhoods still has a balance and when we amend it to include this year's budget they will have enough to carry forward for 14 and 15. And how much is that? The current balance I believe right now is fifteen thousand dollars something like that and they're getting another twenty this okay. year. Okay thank you. Commissioner Maddox. Yes sir um, and seeing this is, 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 is a good thing um, I was a part of the actual budget team. Uh, I believe when we met in February, um, we had moved forward with the packet that we had had, I believe, 50 proposals, um, in which we had narrowed it down to four. Um, I don't know if it was discussed in the last meeting that I was actually um, um, in that meeting by phone, and so I don't know if I missed it, but it is still something that I recommend that, um, that, we, can, that we bring back the proposal um, for uh, 
um, I believe it was a, a, a re-entry shelter and, and rehabilitation program for 27th and uh, Wendell, and I've actually got the paperwork here. Um, I'm not sure if it was taken out, why? Because we had moved to push it forward in February, uh, but they were simply asking for, I believe, $50,000 uh, for their project. And uh, when I look at the Freedom Schools, which was something I kind of somewhat proposed last year, I don't believe that the Freedom School put in a proposal this year for funding, but we still made it a $100,000 line item. So if possible, uh, maybe we cut that in half or whatever it be the case. Um, I, I do not know why this actual proposal was taken off the list, but in, but in the meantime, when I read down, it is something that I believe that our community needs uh, for people who struggle with addictions. Um, and, and, and they were supposed to, I believe, last year be approved. They were one of the groups that were left out, and that's why they were brought forward in February again um, with the thought of possibly moving them forward for funding. So if something happened between the last meeting when I was brought in via the phone, I don't know, but that was something that I did want to see move forward and hoping that the commission still sees it important as they did in February when we narrowed that 50 proposals down to five or six. Commissioner Markley. So um, what happened at our initial CDBG meeting is that, well, and what happened back in February is we, we asked staff to do an analysis of those items that we sent forward, not just for CDBG, but for all kinds of other things that were presented to us during that public hearing. So we sent those along to staff and we asked them to analyze and provide some feedback on some of the proposals that came from the community. That was true for the CDBG items as well and Village Initiative, um, as Commissioner Maddox said, was one of those that was put forward for staff review. Wilba provided us with an analysis of that program along with the others and there were significant issues with their application in terms of what they requested the money for and what was allowable under the CDBG regulations. So what the committee decided um, at that time, those of us that were present, was that we agreed with Wilba's recommendation that that entity not receive funding because the funds they requested were not for allowable items. And, and thank you, I understand that that decision was made based off the fact of what Wilbur brought forward, but still being the case, um, if, if there are issues with it, I'd like to know what the issues were uh, here today, and uh, I want to know were those, were those issues communicated to the proposer, because as we decided to move forward with that group, were they given the proper notice of the issue that took place within their proposal? Because when I spoke with Mr. George, and I believe he's here today, um, he hadn't received any communication about there being an issue with his proposal. So, so even though if we did move forward again, we put $100,000 into a line item for Freedom Schools, the Freedom School did not issue a proposal at all. So what I'm recommending that is if we move $50,000 of that 100000 to a proposed group that has had its proposal in place, since February. Commissioner McKiernan. Am I, mis am I misremembering something? The day that you weren't here, but, and, but you called in by phone, I could have sworn you were vigorously supporting $100,000 in the Freedom School line. D did I misunderstand that? Well, well, you didn't misunderstand it, but the, but the issue was, as if you paid attention, that the Freedom School did not put a proposal forward for funding. So the fact that I was mentioning the Freedom School and they had not put a proposal in is why I'm mentioning that. Well, the other comment that I would make is, unfortunately, with the low level of CDBG dollars that are available from the federal government, we had probably 10 to $100 worth of requests for every dollar we had to spend. So it is certainly a fact that many people who submitted funding requests did not get funded. Right because there simply were many more requests than there were dollars to fund them. So that, unfortunately, is a fact that we're going to have to deal with. But I guess I am confused because I thought we spent a lot of time talking about it. You're not confused. <laughs> and, 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 and just to be, just to be frank again, I, I don't know where the confusion comes from. If the Freedom School doesn't have an initial proposal and if we had a book of 50 proposals and the Freedom School did not put a proposal forward, but Mr. George did with the village initiative, and we agreed in February to move forward with the village initiative. 
then I don't I don't see where the breakdown was. I don't recall. Agreeing. Commissioner Townsend. I, I don't want to cut this off. Are you Thank changing you. topics? Yes. So okay, let's hold let, you for yeah. a topic change. <laughs> um, okay, so. Can we just do a straw poll and see where we're at with that? Well, the, let's, let's back up a little bit. Um, Mr. Criswell, I believe you were a part of the vetting of some of the different proposals that went through. Yes. And in your review of this proposal, do you, are you, do you remember, I mean, we had a lot of proposals on it. Do you remember the, the issues that were pertinent to that? <clears throat> uh, yes, sir. In fact, I'll just read you the staff report that we provided to the CDBG subcommittee when the subcommittee asked staff to vet out to uh, analyze uh, this proposal. Issue one, uh, the proposal did not identify number of persons to be served. Number two, <clears throat> CDBG funds cannot be used to complete the exterior and exterior construction as requested due to issues with the environmental review process timeline. Number three, CDBG funds cannot be used to furnish the building. The purchase of equipment and furnishings is, is ineligible unless it constitutes uh, public service. Number four, the budget requests $5,000 for 15 computers, tables, and accessories. Purchase of equipment is ineligible unless it constitutes the public service. And the fifth issue, concern about the sustainability without CDBG funds. Staff recommendation for funding this uh, proposal was uh, no. Okay. So the committee then, you, did, you went through and did that for each of the different requests that were pertinent to CDBG, is that correct? Yes, sir. And after your review, you recommended no. The committee came forward not recommending it. Do other committee members want to speak in terms of, um, do we want, does the commission want to override our staff's recommendation in terms well, of the eligibility of the funding? Well, well my, concern, my concern is that these issues were not communicated to the person who put in the proposal to see if there was adequate information for what was mentioned that they didn't have. And then my second approach is to most of it, to the two things that were mentioned in regards to public service, that, that is what that is said for, public service for, for people who have issues. And so I don't know, what do you mean when you say not buying computers or not doing work unless it's for public service? Because it's my understanding that that's what the proposal was all about, was uh, public service. And so my concern, it continues to be a concern for the CDBG department is that the communication is not well communicated back to the proposer. And so if it did come forward in that meeting when I was by phone, I still wasn't given adequate time to speak. And then also the uh, meeting came abruptly to an end pretty quick. So that's my reason for bringing it forward again, because to me it wasn't thorough communication, communicated back to the village initiative to see if they had the proper things that was just read off by Mr. Chris Well. Okay, Commissioner McKiernan. So I'm still a little confused. I just pulled up the, uh, the documents that we had for our May 29th meeting. Uh, Commissioners Mergia, Markley, and myself were present here. You were present by phone that day. And nowhere on this list from May 29th does it contain an itemization of that, and nor did we talk about it that day. And it does contain the Freedom School on here, and you didn't say on that day, no, wait a minute, that's not a valid proposal for this year. As a matter of fact, I thought we had a fairly lengthy discussion about why it was necessary that that stay in this funding proposal. So I guess I, we had a meeting on May 29th, and neither of these issues came forward on May 29th. But nor, nor the previous meeting prior to that. And, and, and again, I appreciate you continuing to mention the Freedom School. But the Freedom School did not put in a proposal. Then why was it on the report on May 29th and we didn't take it off that day? We should have taken it off that day. Well, who are you, who are you asking that to? Are you asking that to staff or are you asking that to commissioners? Because it's not my job to take it off. Can, can I respond, Mr. Mayor? 
please. The discussion around freedom schools, as I recall from the subcommittee, was rather than specifically identify a source of funds for a specific freedom school or freedom schools in the northeast part of our county, the subcommittee decided to appropriate $100,000 for any freedom school that might want to have a program in 2015. So in order to have the appropriations available in 2015, we have to appropriate the money before there is even uh, someone who wants to do a program. If someone comes forward in 2015 and wants to do a freedom school program, regardless of where it is ge geographically in the county, if the commission has not appropriated the funds to do that, we don't get to do a freedom school, or you all don't get to approve doing a freedom school. And so that was my recollection of the discussion around why the freedom school appropriation was, uh, was budgeted as it is. Commissioner Merguia. Thanks, Mayor. Just a couple of comments. My recollection as being on the committee and being present at those meetings is exactly what Gordon just said. Um, how this may help people remember the conversation. Um, so uh, Commissioner Markley had brought up that there are a lot of freedom schools, not just one freedom school. I think Commissioner Maddox was referring to the freedom school in his district. Can and you please speak directly? I'm sorry, we wanna. Jeez, that's the first I've ever been told to speak louder. Um, <laughs> so um, the, uh, I, I think Commissioner uh, Maddox was speaking in regards to a freedom school specifically in its district. And Commissioner Markley brought up the point that there are lots of freedom schools throughout the county and um, not one should have preference over another as they all serve sort of an underserved population. And that's when staff had suggested to have a line item appropriation for freedom schools, period, end of story, um, that would be dealt with internally. Now, that's that comment. The only other comment I had, Mayor, is you said a few minutes ago, um, um, you mentioned, uh, Commissioner Markley was talking about um, that this proposal that Mr. George moved forward um, did not fit uh, the criteria and therefore was not eligible. And then you mentioned um, that would the commission like to overrule that eligibility? Um, we don't have that option. From my understanding, um, my understanding is that the eligibility requirements are come from our staff. Um, and our staff's interpretation of the federal regulations. <coughs> um, now, I guess we could get a lawyer's opinion on that and see if it fits, um, but they've been doing it a long time. I assume they know what qualifies and what doesn't. Um, and I will just make this one last comment in general. Um, I completely agree with everything Commissioner McKiernan and Commissioner Markley said about what went on at those meetings. Um, I would add, one um, thing that I, from having side conversations with Commissioner Maddox and from meeting with Mr. George myself and being an advocate for the project, one of the things that later on, not tonight, that we do need to figure out is those organizations that are out there trying to do really good things that don't understand sometimes the process or understand necessarily the technical side of the grant application process. Um, be given some sort of assistance. And I don't know who would do that. We can t add that maybe later as an agenda item because Commissioner Maddox is right about, I will agree with you on this one thing that <laughs> this one issue is that there seems to be a disconnect with some groups that try to apply. They spend a lot of time just trying to figure out how to ask for something and their message gets lost. Like I said, I personally met with Mr. George. He has a fantastic idea for a program. I'm the one that recommended he apply for the casino grant money, also in addition to CDBG money, and clearly there was not, if his, I guess I'm with Maddox in that if his application was not eligible, he, he should have been afforded an opportunity to make it eligible if it was at all possible, if the ask could have been asked differently. So that's a topic for a different day. For today, everything that Gordon and the, uh, Mark Lee and McKiernan said, that's what I recall from that discussion. Commissioner Walker. I was of the view before the last comment that we, we ask a committee to flesh these issues out. 
and in the absence of compelling reasons to reject that, I mean, I certainly don't disagree that what the purpose of doing real work is, is a good one. Uh, I'd love to help them out, but I don't know how to, you know, do that based on what was put in the application and be fair to everyone else. Um, That's a different one. Well, well I, 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 what I guess I'm getting to is when we have these committees flush it out, and it's not like it's been in a vacuum, we've had several discussions about community development, I'm, I'm more inclined to say let's move forward with what the committee has recommended, and uh, if there's corrections to be made or an injustice done, we'll have to do it later because the debate has stagnated to back and forth. Well, and I think the, uh, I think the issue, obviously, when I said – uh, my statement about does the group want to overrule the staff, I understand the consequences of that. I, did, I asked the question. I did not make a recommendation. Okay. Um, clearly, this is the first time. I mean, we've improved this process exponentially. Um, having, a, having a form where people can actually apply, having the staff vet them, which are CDBG and which are general fund, and having them do the work of, of going through them. I mean, enormous amount of staff time has been spent vetting these different proposals. We did have $6.2 million in requests um, that came forward from the public. And unlike in years past, when we received those in late May, when we really couldn't do anything with them, I mean, our hands were already tied, we actually had the time this year to vet those, um, to evaluate those, and to consider them. Um, I think the next step for this committee is to evaluate the process after the first year That's right. um, and to say what went right the first year, what did we miss this first year, and what do we need, need to do differently moving forward. I think one of the things I'm going to want to evaluate at our strategic plan in October is we dramatically changed the entire budgeting process for the commission. I think we need to evaluate it step by step in terms of its efficacy. I think there was a lot of good in it. And we also need to be prepared to make some corrections. So my ask of this committee would be, um, if the consensus is to stay with the committee's recommendations as presented tonight, that the committee meet again, uh, perhaps after the budget, and talk about how to improve the process going forward um, to clarify communication and other things. So that was, I, I will just, reaffirm what you've said that absolutely that was the committee's intention we barely got through reappropriations and this year's budget <laughs> appropriations we were disappointed we met several times as you know so the goal is that um, we'd meet again and review how the process goes for next year moving forward okay Commissioner Maddox yes sir and I just want to say this to be on a record um, I don't mind moving forward with 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 the normal proposals but um, as the village initiative was treated last year, they were left on the outside looking in by a process that I feel we could have done better with. They moved forward again this year with their proposal. It, I'm glad that we will be moving forward to quantumly focusing our CDBG funding dollars on bigger projects that, that get more bang for our buck. And so I don't have a problem with that. I just hope in the future that we understand where CDBG funding is really for and the initiative is about and so when I look at some of the budget this year even though I was a part of the committee um, I, I, I don't see where the urban core really benefited from this uh, allocation and so I'll say that with 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 with, with, with very uh, detailed outline when you look at it there's not a lot that went to the urban core within the CDBG funding this year and so just wanted to let that be on the record because when I think about the CDBG funding, that's what's in the actual um, framework. And I was going to read it, but I'm not going to read it because we all know where the C what the CDBG grant was all about and, and what that funding was meant to be spent on. And I don't see that in this year's budget. So I'm glad that moving forward, we will be taking a more collective approach and look at how we spend that, that funding. Thank you. Okay. Um, next topic, Commissioner Townsend. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I would like to have uh, Ms. Miller just identify on some of these 
slides for my better understanding where certain dollars that um, have been approved uh, and are in the budget, but just so I can understand it better and those watching can understand it better, particularly in light of the note at the bottom, from what fund or line, either on this slide or another one, would we see the home repair budget under the CDBG umbrella? It is on the first page of this budget. It's one of the highlighted ones about three quarters of the way down. Under rehabilitation of housing, there is your emergency home repair budget. Okay, 380000 Right, along with 20000 for barrier removals in residential okay. housing. All right. So if someone's looking for help with the roof or whatever, that's, that's where it's come from. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. And um, you'd already... You'd already shown uh, me, I think, in the book where, oh, and it's there. Yeah. The uh, okay. NEDAC 140. Yes. It looked different in here. Yes. All right. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you. Okay. Any more conversation on the budget as presented uh, by the committee and the administration? All right. I don't see any more conversation for this. Um, we will move this forward for adoption as presented tonight to um, July 31st when we adopt the rest of the budget, we will adopt this um, at that time. We will vote independently on the budget and the CDB budget is its own separate vote. Um, so, Mayor, that would be called the annual plan. You'll be adopting our annual plan, which, which thank you. encompasses this budget. The so. official terminology is we will adopt the CDBG <laughs> annual plan. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We will dot our I's and cross our T's. <laughs> Okay, that completes our CDBG conversation. Uh, we now have the conversation on the Wyandotte County Fair. And again, I will turn this over uh, to Administrator Bach. Thank you, Mayor. And again, this is another group where we had a committee working on this, but uh, one of the requests that we had was to give a little bit of historical significance to the previous funding. Um, during the public hearing, though, we had had a, a significant, or a request made by the county fair to increase funding that had come into it. I believe the committee did go out and do some work. They looked through where things are done. So I was going to walk back through where we were with our previous funding to the fair, and then I'll turn this over to the committee to talk about um, what maybe direction you want to go from here. So if I can get the, the uh, first slide, and this is a little hard to read as you go into some of the smaller numbers. But I went back to pre-consolidation to show that there was, at that time, there was a mill levy. And I'll, I'll get to the point that we changed from that kind of format um, a few years ago. But we had a mill levy that was dedicated to the county fair. Um, and at that point, you can see we had a series of years where they were con we contributed $152,000 to the fair. Um, that was done really regardless of what the mill rate was, which they tended to move the mill rate to keep the number balanced at that amount. Um, and we continued that right into consolidation, but then shortly thereafter, the, that's when our growth in the county started to happen. So you see the mill valley, mill go down, um, but the value that was going to the fair either is at the same or continues to go up. Reached a peak in 2001 of about 215,000 and then drop down where you can back to 157 and kind of move through that formula and then back up in 2008 to where between the um, payment we were making and the reimbursements was as high as $226,000. Um, then we had some combination of years, a year where we didn't fund the fair, um, any outside money outside of the uh, reimbursement for ribbons and trophies and award cost. Um, and then we reached a number in 2012, uh, and actually that was a number in, yeah, in 2012 where we funded them at 77,000 plus the reimbursement. So those numbers are running, uh, run around $100,000, and that would continue into 14 and 15, because you see the reimbursement number is not there, but that is built in our budget. So you have about 77,199, then plus the amount that goes to reimbursement. So. That's the history. We went away from mill rates in 2009, with, and we had a 
series of different mill rates that we juggled through all our budgets. So we went away from that and just determined this is an allocation of this commission as to how much money is being expended in each area. We didn't need to deal with 10 different mill rates, varying funding agencies. So that's how we just put it all under the, the county general fund area and then we allocated out from there for the most part. Next slide shows the um, relocation of the county fair, which was a major event that happened um, when we, we had the, the unified government, or it was the county side of the equation, owned the property where the fair was setting, and we leased the property out to the fair, um, a very long-term lease, probably 50 plus years. So it was, it was in a, a long-term relationship like that. We reached agreement to um, gain control, move the fair at that point, uh, we made a payment to the Wyandotte County Fair Association of $4.6 million, which was intended for the replacement of the buildings um, that they were going to have. So recognizing there would be site infrastructure and building replacement costs, this was an estimate done at the time as to how to make this work. And then in 2010, we did a deed transfer of 110 acres, um, which was to replace the 103 acres that they had the lease on at the former Wyandotte County Fairgrounds area. So this had a value of about $2.2 million, and the intent was that they'd be able to go out and be able to build some new um, facilities on that site. I think the next slide gets into really assumptions or requests that were made from the public presentation when the um, fair submitted to the unified government and they made a request because they want to do additional things on site. They were looking at some uh, good opportunities to come forward with some some new venues that they can put on site that they believe will be year-round revenue contributors that can come in. Um, and Mr. Levin and his staff put this uh, slide together to show they requested $1.7 million. Um, and then he's got the cost of issuance listed on there. And if you were to do that over a 10, 15, or 20-year period and really take it from the perspective that we just funded from the general fund and then work with what we would get from revenue, but this would be the level of risk you would have for that debt service each year. So that's a historical preservation and then our perspective, and then also to get into financing behind their current request. In this year's budget, I'll say the current budget is, per the first slide, it's at the 77,000 plus money for their reimbursements. So we're that upper $90,000, close to $100,000 that is anticipated that will go to the fair um, for their annual activities, but we did not build in additional money for this. I do have within the capital projects area this $1.7 million, but it's built in under special revenues, so it's treated more like a development project where you would see some outside funding source. It's not noted that it would be coming from the general fund, and that's not built into our debt issue at this time from the county. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, committee members. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll start because I've clearly been a proponent of resolving the uh, Wyandotte County Fair uh, situation. Uh, it's been going on for a period of time. Um, at the time that this was acquired, the, the, the fair basically was bought out by, by Schlitterbaum for that project. Uh, and the money paid, plus the acquisition of the real estate. It was never my understanding that the money received for the buildings or the um, real estate would, in effect, uh, bring about the complete reconstruction of the Wyandotte County Fair facility. Um, the acquisition of the ground the various things that had to be done to the ground, the grading, uh, the water diversion that then uh, had to be uh, done in order, to, while the grading was going on, that then had to be deconstructed afterwards to comply, and the various regulatory matters that impacted it, never intended to build a replacement fair. So there was always the expectation that at some point in the future, there was going to have to be something done. There is an MOU, which we do not have up here tonight, in which it was stated that uh, the idea of some type of capital 
debt issue would be necessary to complete the project at some future point and the unified government and I forget how it's worded but basically it was a sort of good faith inducement that you see in agreements that you know if everything goes as uh, we all hope it does we're going to issue debt and you're going to you know build this this uh, fair facility uh, as you look at this you can see that on several several years they've had to operate with no allocation whatsoever and frankly um, I am convinced that they cannot continue to operate on $77,000 a year. Now perhaps there are people at this table that want to see the Wyandotte County Fair disappear or perhaps not want it but are willing to do so in lieu of the, the cost. I am not among that group. I think that we have to take responsibilities for the actions that were completed by, I would guess maybe Mr. Kane would have been the only one here when that project was initially done and could perhaps reflect on what he remembers about it better. I think Mayor Holland and Commissioner McGee may have come on at some point midway during after the deal had already been done with Schlitterbaum. I guess I'm looking at a proposal that includes a reasonable operating budget plus Obviously, if we're going to do a debt issuance uh, based on revenue, we're going to have to guarantee the revenue for a period of time. And by lose Mr. Levin's projections, that's one of those three numbers. Obviously, the 122,000 a year would be a much easier pill to swallow over the, of course, over the long run, it would be more costly to do that. Um, I guess for purpose of debate, I would like to see the fair restored to funding that it had in um, well I mean you're picking a number here based on and and the variation in it is is not easily explained because I think each year the prizes are different the total amount is different so roughly uh, 180 to 190 thousand dollars a year for their operational expenses and then the 122 23,000 a year to pay the revenue bonds for a period of years. Now, the reason we would pay them or guarantee them is in part because in order to generate revenue, they're going to have to proceed forward with their two ideas or, or multiple ideas. One is to complete the event facility that uh, would be a revenue source uh, for people to rent and use for a wide variety of purposes from parties to receptions to weddings to other kinds of similar events uh, not to mention events connected with uh, rodeo or, or horses or various things of that nature uh, the second revenue generator and one that I think would probably uh, do well uh, considering how far you have to drive to use one of these facilities now is the uh, proposed shooting range and trap and skeet shooting which if you're a hunter or a, a, a gun enthusiast uh, there's no place to go really if, you, if you're not willing to pay for a membership uh, I'm trying to think where the nearest public facility up it's up north somewhere I forget what the name of it is the bullet hole out south you can go to and and they I, it would be my feeling that based on the prices that I last experienced at the bullet hole they wouldn't be they can be very competitive uh, with other other shooting facilities the final is this idea of a uh, campground uh, for lack of a better term where people have leases of various lengths but mostly they would be catering to a crowd that now leases uh, for a period of time while stationed at uh, for example Fort Leavenworth where they might be here for a year for training or six months and rather than buy a facility or rent an apartment they will you know have a camp camper of some sort of recreation vehicle and and need a place to uh, to put that it's my understanding that there is one up the road from there in Leavenworth County that is uh, soon going to be closed I'm, don't quote me on that but I'm, that's what I understand so I guess my proposal is is that we agree to a 20-year debt financing of the 1.7 million 75 million that we uh, 
basically fund them, and I'm I'm suggesting 180,000, somewhere in that range, and that the debt be guaranteed uh, for the first five years or whatever. However, we have to construct that. Now, there's probably a lot more to this story that can be told by other people, but that's as good as I can do tonight. All right, I want, um, for the purposes of clarity, um, to get an idea of your recommendation. We currently, f using rough numbers for the last three, last three, four years, we've been funding them at about, I'm gonna round up to $100,000. It's been 99, seven, 97, nine, and this year, the awards will be on the seven on top of the 77 and next year as well so if we're currently at about a hundred thousand dollars of funding is your recommendation to raise that base funding to a to 198 or 200,000 about to the two hundred thousand dollar I'm just trying to just for clarity's sake I just want to look at the numbers we're looking at you know, I would love to get them as much money so they can operate without having to worry about it. I, I want to be fair to them. If the prizes are running 20000 then I'm, I guess I'm suggesting 160. But yeah, I'd love to get them the 200000 180 guaranteed plus up, up to 20000 for the prizes and reimbursements. Okay. That's what I would like ideally, but I'm, I'm certainly not locked into that. If that makes a difference now the issue on the debt issuance if we can go to the next one and I just want to be clear here there's to me there are two elements to this one is our issuance of the bonds and our backing with our general obligation authority um, that's one issue the other issue is backing them with the money to pay the debt Right. I mean, it'd be one thing for us to issue it under our authority if they had a revenue stream that could pay the full debt service. And so my question is, are you at, are, is your recommendation both of those? Both the, the, well, the, I th I'm sure the obligation bond is, is in that. Well, I, certainly if they generate, if, if they're generating revenues, it was never my intention. I mean, they would have to use their revenues first, and if there's a shortfall, we would make up the difference. Um, the idea would not be that we would pay the 122000 every year. Okay, that's what I wanted to be clear on. So, because if, if it was 160000 plus 122000 then we're at 280 290 uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm anticipating that as soon as they can get up and running with uh, the trap shooting, and uh, the shooting range would take a little longer to construct, they will be generating revenues that will reduce that amount. But to what extent, I would have to see a pro forma, someone would have to present that, but clearly that plus the other revenue sources upon completion will start generating revenue. Okay. Commissioner Philbrook, and then Townsend. Uh, and ex Kane. Exactly, as far as what he's referring to, is a, we're almost looking like at startup money to start a new business, okay? Which means that, which means that we provide that initial jump start, they get things going, they get the ball rolling, they get money coming in once they get their stuff built and occupied and used, and then we roll down what we supply them and they start paying all of those on their own, on their own money. But we still give them, you know, their their annual one hundred and whatever thousand, the separate amount. And so how we would put that together, I'm not the financial wizard you know, on that, but I would like to see some suggestions on how we can do that and how we can make that work. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Townsend. I was I was just trying to understand again the numbers. We've got in the budget already how much? 77,000 or 100,000? Essentially $100,000 cuz we are going to include the prizes and ribbons and such. Okay. So, so it'll be $100,000 this year approximately. And, and I saw that number last year. So above that, what is the number and what is the obligation for the UG that is being sought for it would 2015? Be an additional 80,000. Okay. Of general fund money on the county side, plus the 
plus I don't know how long it would take to get the revenue or special obligation debt issuance of when the first payment would come due. So it's the operations versus the capital. And so operations, you'd like to see an additional 80000 So we're looking at $180,000 annually for operations. And then you would also like capital support, certainly with this general obligation backing that we would bring, which would allow them to borrow money at a, at a lower rate, and it would also allow, it would allow them to get the financing. So and we're I'm proposing the 20-year option because it's easier on our budget but clearly it's cheaper in the long term to do the 10-year. I don't know which, I would have to leave that to the financial work. Okay. But does that mean then that we are, the UG, obligating at minimum 122000 in yes. budget year 2015 in addition to the 80000 extra? Yeah. I believe the practical way, and I'll let Lou jump in if I go astray on this, but you would be adding the $80,000 to operation, so that would be in 2015. Uh, I would have guessed at the timing of doing this, we wouldn't be able to do the debt issue. It would be our standard debt issue that we'd do next March. So for them to do the project, we would, it would be something that would take place in 15. Probably our first payment on that would be in 2016. Lou, would that be how you'd structure it? If, if we did this independent of our March financing and through the PBC, and let's say we did it sometime late this year or we waited to the spring of next year, it, it would be its own financing and we could structure the debt payments maybe to not have a principal payment in the first year to minimize that 122000 we, we might We might even build in, uh, I'm going to use the term capitalized interest, uh, to have a neg negligible um, debt payment in the first year. The, so I guess the, what, what he's saying is we could probably structure it so the impact on the 2015 would be what you would be going with at the operating in the 16th. Maybe there would be some then. It's all timing. And then, you know, you still have to pay the bill. So, I mean, I, I would say you'd be looking at a 2016 budget where you'd have the 20, 122 plus the 80. So you'd be $200,000 more than your currently budget is what you'd need to think you would need to build into the county side of the equation. And we would have to know we would be guaranteeing this for a couple of years. I mean, you got, you're going to have to guarantee it for the life of the program. That's the only way you're going to issue the bonds to make sure you structured. But we would do our agreement with the uh, fair in a form that the revenues that come in could offset. But as far as budgeting, clearly for the first few years, you're going to be budgeting the full amount. Which would be about two hundred thousand dollars from the estimate over the one hundred thousand, the eighty, and then at minimum the one twenty two. Yes. Okay, right. thank you. Commissioner Kane. Thank you, Mayor. You know, I'm all about the fair. I love the fair. You took my wife there when we started dating. But I've got more phone calls in the last seven to ten days about how the money has been spent. And in all, the UAW, Local 31, Labor's 1290s, when you write a check for anything, there's two people that sign a check. That way you know where the monies are going. I've been told there's a lot of waste out there. They've reseeded a couple times, two or three times. I don't know if any of that's a fact. I did drive by there the other day. I guess I rattled the boys up because I went and looked at it. There's two broken down gates as you're coming into the place really makes you feel proud to go somewhere when you get two broken gates for the Wyandotte County Fair. I would have spent some money on that to make that look like it's exciting to go into the facility. Then when I went in there, it looked bad. It looked real bad. And I asked the guy, how's he going to cut the grass? How's he going to get this place ready for the fair next week? And I guess I made him mad. And I want to see the fair get some money. But I think we need to oversee how they spend it. This is a lot of money we're talking about, and we're talking for a long time. And I think that we need to put out proper bids. We need to make sure that the uh, qualified people, and, and, and you know, I'm all about trying to get as many people from Wyandotte County as possible. But if there's bids out there that are cheaper, and not just because we know them, 
I think we need to take a serious hard look. And if we don't oversee it, then we need to force that board to have two signatures on that check. Because these people from the fair, some of them seem pretty happy, but the 4-H people aren't. And the 4-H people were the ones that were calling saying, every hey, we we time we try to talk to one of these guys, they blow us off. Well, we're asking for a lot of, they're asking for a lot of money, and at least they need to tell us where that money's going. And as, and as the process goes through, you know, because th this fair and the 4-H is very important to this community. But I think there's been a lot of wasteful money spent, and I think, and a lot of people don't know <coughs> that. And I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for mentioning all this, but it, it, this is the way I feel. And I think the commission needs to know about these issues. And, and there's no way I'm going to say yes to that unless either we oversee their work or they make it where two people sign that check. Commissioner McKiernan. Thank you. Um, I think Mr. Bach just answered my question in, in response to Commissioner Townsend. What I was curious was, if we're looking for, say, we take the 20-year financing, we've got $122,000 a year. Those are revenue bonds. Ideally, revenue pays the bill on that. But you just said we should expect a period of some years where we have to pay as revenue is ramping up to the point that it can repay that bond. Yes. That was the proposal. And my, my biggest concern about that is that we have the county side budget, which was structurally imbalanced for how many years, and we're attempting to put it back in structural balance. And so this is a factor that then swings it away from, I mean, the additional operating would be one thing, but adding that debt payment fully covered by us would be something that just swings it a little bit further away from structural balance. And if we can pull that off, that's great. But that's my first reaction when I hear the proposal is, we just got it into structural balance, something that's important for our bond rating. And now we're putting a pressure in place which would tend to swing it back away. Uh, Commissioner Walters. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, the last time we talked about this, I made a request, and that was that we do some checking into what other counties in the, in the region do in support of their county fairs. And I wonder if anybody's been able to do that. I, I didn't do it myself, but I wonder if anybody has been able to. Um, we did do that, and I would... I do not believe we have that information with us tonight. I'm trying to look to see. I, th I think I, I could have copies made of uh, material that was prepared er earlier this year. Okay. okay. Um, I like the way Commissioner Philbrook put this because this is the way I look at it too. And I think she said this is like a startup. This is a, a business. And I, I wonder if if a group came to us that was not labeled Wyandotte County Fair and said, look, we want to build an RV park and a shooting range and, and some other developments, and we want taxpayer money to pay for it, uh, would we consider that? And I think if we would consider that, we would want some real information. We'd want revenue projections, economic impact. We would like you know, we would want to, to evaluate whether this was a wise use of taxpayers' money. And I haven't seen any of that to date other than just um, allusions to the fact that this will be profitable or this will have a big positive impact in some way. So I think we should be very careful before we approve this uh, and do our own you know, due diligence and make sure that uh, if we're going to spend taxpayers' money and go into partnership with the Wyandotte County Fair on these terms, that we have a reasonable expectation that some of these revenue projections can actually pay for um, this debt. I, I don't know, uh, and maybe this is a question to Administrator Bach, um, this really is a partnership. If we're going into a situation where we're going to issue debt, 
and the entity that's going to receive, uh, you know, the benefit of that is going to do their business, and at the end of the year, they're going to say, well, we can pay this much this year, and then the county gets to pay the rest. It seems like we would want some pretty diligent review of finances from top to bottom if that's truly what the business relationship is going to be, right? Uh, you know, I, I can't imagine we would go in and, and, and just say, well, you know, how much can you pay this year? Oh, 50000 Okay, well, we'll pay the rest. Um, and I don't know if we have that kind of review over the county, uh, county fairs budgets I'm now, sure but it sounds like the business deal that is being being suggested here, unless I'm misunderstanding it. A couple of points. I'm, one, they have submitted a, a revenue and expense sheet to go through and talk about how this could work or how the, how the program would work. They also did some fiscal projections, hired a study to do it. I will say we as staff have not properly vetted through that information to be able to come back to you to comment on that at this point, and that is, that is something we need to do to go through to probably give you that our analysis from a capacity standpoint as to what they built in, you know, whether or not we think that is something that will work or not. And um, I, I don't know that we would have any reason that we would challenge any of the feasibility analysis from their private consultant, but we would comment on that probably it's the best we could as we do on other ones that, that come forth to us. Um, in regard to your question whether or not, no, we do not go out and audit the expenses of the fair today. Um, they they'll submit back in their you know their reimbursement type things for eligibility and we we pay out on that but we don't go through and audit their operations today yes commissioner walker it would be my assumption that first of all this is not exactly a startup business um, the fair has successfully operated in this county for more than 160 years until 2008, it was a viable ongoing uh, operation that, if left undisturbed, would still be operating in the manner it had before at the same location. Uh, the unified government was induced to make a deal for uh, an amusement park, and the crash in 2008 uh, limited the scope of that project, which, as you all know, there's still trying to rebuild but it is far from what was promised and yet we're still in bed with them doing business my my response is that this is one of those family oriented activities I can't address Mr. Kane's comment about the uh, 4-H I had not been made aware of those comments from any of the 4-H'ers I know we have a number of people involved in the fair and 4-H out in the audience tonight Certainly it is about the 4-H'ers getting an opportunity to participate and, and compete at the various uh, events. I also assume that prior to issuing any debt, we're going to have a uh, development agreement like we do with any other entity uh, that would uh, define some of these questions that you can't really answer tonight. Are we going to have the ability to audit? Well, of course. Uh, I wouldn't issue the debt to them no more than a bank would issue you a loan without being able to, you know, take a look at your financial record. Um, terms and conditions are, you know, to be negotiated. Uh, I can't tell you what every term in negotiation, but I don't see it as a situation where they're going to be able to tell us what they're going to pay us back. You know, they're going to have to prove up what their profit or loss was and and go from there and I think in most of our development deals we include provisions about obtaining financial information as long as we're on the hook for the dollar so I hope that addresses those issues Commissioner Markley so this Commission I think more than any previous one has been very good about setting priorities and strategic planning and what I would say is that um, although I think all the commissioners love the fair and are happy to have it, I don't think that it's risen to a level in priority where we would be willing to raise taxes to support it. 
And unless everybody else is looking at a different budget document than I am, we don't have the money to support it without raising taxes. Um, so, you know, Lou is over here begging for money on his bottom line, and I'm not interested in raising taxes to give it to him, sorry, Lou, but I'm sure not interested in taking money off of that bottom line when we're already in a position that we don't want to be in, in terms of how much money is in our reserve. So, you know, I guess that's really just the bottom line for me, is we can't afford to be spending money for these first two years, 2016 budget isn't looking any better than 2015 budget, to pay these, this debt service for the county fair. Uh, I'd like to address that issue uh, about the money part. Um, it's been brought to my attention several times, and I've never said anything about it, but I guess I'm just going to drop this bomb right now. <laughs> Why not? Because I'm looking for money for something I want to back, so I'm going to do it. Um, and that is the issue around all the cars that are taken home from the UG and how much money we spend every year with police, fire, even the city garage of people taking home cars. So if they're by accident called in to work, they have that car. And I do believe that we're probably talking over a million dollars a year spent on that, way over a million. So I suggest we look into that if we're looking for some money. And that's all I have to say. I don't mind looking into that. <laughs> I'm not sure that changes my position, but I do agree. All right, uh, Commissioner Kane. Thank you, Mayor. You know, I, I agree with, with Hal. I think we need to do something. And I don't have a problem with, with the 20 year deal. We need to make sure that we see their books. I mean, I'd like to know how some of this $4.6 million is spent, how they spent it, when they spent it, who they spent it on. Did they send out, you know, uh, proposals to everyone or did one group get it? And at the end of the day, I think we, they need two signatures, whether it be two board members or us in the city, but I think we have to watch where our money is going. And, and right now, there's so many people upset because they say, well, this money was spent over here and this money was spent over there. I don't know. I haven't seen their books. But when we give them this money, if we give them the money, we need to make sure that it's spent and it's spent wisely. Commissioner McKiernan. I'll agree with Commissioner Walker from a moment ago. I really do think we need to approach this like any other development deal that we do. And in that case, because one of the things that I wonder, again, going back to this debt payment is, what have been their annual revenues, let's say, you know, prior to moving out of the current, the, the old location? What are the current revenues now? What are revenue projections? Would revenue, would historical revenue or projected revenue be sufficient to cover that revenue bond? Or would there be a gap every year? And so I think, just as Commissioner Walker said, we should treat this like any other development agreement, look at historical and projected and factor it all in. And that'll give us a much clearer picture as to whether or not this is a good deal or we need to look for something better. All right, I want to um, suggest we evaluate this on two levels. There's been two asks. One is, if we go back to the two slides previous, here, one would be if we went back to even the 2010 level of funding, we'd be looking at about $50,000 increase in annual appropriation from the county side in terms of, cause, because basically we cut that, uh, well, we took two thirds, of, they're getting essentially two thirds of what they were getting in 2010 because the 154, I guess, included the awards, whereas the 77 does not. And my personal preference is we give a dollar amount and let them budget the awards rather than having the awards separate. I think it's, a, it's cleaner from the county side to know our budget amount. Mm -hmm. We give an amount of dollars and then that amount of money. I'd rather see $100,000 paid on the payment line and not have a reimbursement for the awards. That seems a little messier to me. Mm -hmm. um, so that just from a budgeting perspective, I think it's cleaner. And then they know what to expect and they can budget accordingly. Um, so on one hand, so we have two issues. One is, do we want, in this year, we currently have about $100,000 budgeted. Do, 
and I would just make the ask that we make that $100,000 and do away with the 25 or 30,000, whatever the number is for the ribbons, and make it a hard number. Do we want to go back and add $50,000 to the 2010 level, or $100,000 to go back to the 2007, 2008 level? You with me? So one is the annual appropriation. Is there a desire in, among this commission to add money to the fair's annual appropriation of either fifty or dollars $100,000? That's one question. The second one is, is there an interest, and that's an annual appropriation. The other question is, are we ready to move on the development agreement with the, with the debt financing, right? If I can take what I've heard, I think I've heard we're not ready today to move forward on the debt financing for a development agreement that there's, a, I've heard a lot of work that, that commissioners would like to see done on that development agreement before that's agreed to. And based on the time it would take to do that, et cetera, we could come back to that later because it doesn't look like even if we did it, there would necessarily be a payment in 2015 anyway. It would be 2016, so it would be a, for our purposes tonight in terms of putting together the 2015 budget, the debt financing on that could come, that approval could come at any point during the year. Is that right? Yes, you just know you'd have that future liability in 16 when we built the budget. That's right, and we should always remember that every time we make a decision mid-year, yes? yes? That we're adding to future year's liabilities. So if we could table the conversation on the debt financing of the, fin of the economic development project and I think there is a desire by some of the commissioners to actually get that worked up to a point where it could be presented as a, as a legitimate deal that we could take action on s sometime in the next few months. Is that fair? Yes, sir. So do we want to do, is there a possibility that we could ask for, a, is 90 days a possible time frame to work up an economic development agreement at least for us to consider to say yes or no to? because we don't have the numbers, we don't have the concrete detail we need. Is that a legitimate time frame, or would you need till the end of the year? What, what would be helpful from your perspective? I, I would think what we could do in that time frame is to work through kind of different deal points that we'd be able to bring back to the commission at that point to talk about and talk about where we are in terms of the evaluation and any concerns one way or another we have. I would rather work it from that perspective. That way we'd be bringing something back that we've, we've vetted through to kind of scale out the level of risk or not, I guess. And I, and I use the term risk in the sense that it's projecting a level of revenue that comes back into it. And while you commented that work it like a normal economic development deal, and I agree with that, there's more detail involved in something like this because while they've been operating for years, there are several new startups within this operation that are going to require staffing at a, at a year-round level that are there to run an operation, such as the, the gun operation, things like that. And then we need to, we would need to dig into that and spend some time with them getting a, an understanding. Um, so it's not a, it's not a, and the other thing is, it's not, not like another deal where we have a financial backer behind this that if they don't make a payment in any given year, we go back to them and make them make the payment. So that's part. So when I say risk, that's where we say we evaluate and we assume a, a moderate case scenario that this is the revenue that, based on these scenarios, they could perform. Then, if they don't, you know, then then we are the ones behind it. There's no other company behind them that would be standing there. You know, the parent company that would fund it. So there's several steps to it, um, but we could come back with something. I assume to standing committee at a normal process in uh, in the October or November time frame to come back and, and vet that out. Okay. Does that seem comfortable for everyone to kind of table that, but not table it in terms of not look into it, but actively look into it in a more aggressive way, work it through our normal channels through economic, or probably through the economic development standing committee, and then bring it forward to the whole commission for consideration. Does that seem like a a reasonable path. Commissioner Regia. <laughs> so I just got to make a comment. You know, I love how people put so much thought into these ideas when they pop up, you know, as an individual line item on an agenda. 
but unfortunately what happens in that process is we lose sight of our bigger goals and um, we did a community <coughs> survey I don't want to belabor this so I'll just say this so the next community survey we do I want to know where the county values the fair on that survey where it falls in our list of priorities I want that question specifically asked when it comes in regard to an economic development proposal and the level of investment our constituents think we should be making with their tax dollars into the fair versus and I love the fair I've been to the fair several times I'm from a small farming community I can appreciate the fair just as much as everybody else I also don't like political grandstanding of that if you don't give the fair all the money they ask for you don't like the fair the world is not that black and white and it's very insulting and I'd really like people to stop doing that around the table I love the fair as much as anybody else the reality is what Commissioner Markley said unless somebody else is carrying around a different budget book than we have there isn't any money now listen I can think of 10,000 other things I'd like our limited staff with their limited resources working on that were huge priorities with the entire county but I want to be a team player also so if nobody if, if everybody wants our new administrator to spend his time working on this deal to figure out whether or not this is going to be a viable deal that pays for itself that it doesn't sound like we're going to actually earn any revenue from it's not going to broaden our tax base which is Dennis Hayes's outgoing words the number one thing we have to do is grow our community so we have to decide we have this this much staff this much money this much resources <coughs> we want to spend our time so I'll be the bad guy here I love the fair I would serve on any committee to help them raise money I would knock my socks off to you know put my best foot forward to see if I couldn't get a money somewhere else I just I just don't know how if that's time well spent but I'm going with the team so whatever you all decide Commissioner Kane well, I don't know if anybody's grandstanding but uh, <laughs> <laughs> those of us that live out west that where the fair is at and it was in uh, Jim's uh, district for ever and ever and ever it's still important to those that are out west you know and uh, I want the fair I just think they need to be, be accountable for where the money is spent and I don't think anybody, when we did the survey, I don't think anybody thought that the survey was 100% accurate because I think different questions would, could have went for different districts. Mm -hmm. And I can promise you there's more people live in District 5 and in Jim's district go out there than those in your area, Ann. And there's more people that participated from out west than there is on the east side of town, although there are several. And, uh, you know, not to get territorial, but... What's important in, in uh, Brian's area might not be important in mine, but what's important in mine is important to me. It's important to the people that I represent. So I don't think I'm grandstanding, but I can. Well, I know also that, that my district has quite a few people that are involved in 4-H and the fair, and I know there's quite a few people in Turner as well who have those, you know, those inclinations and have kids involved in that, in that sort of things. And I do also know that the 4-H is expanding into inner city as much as they can, getting uh, children involved with uh, small animals and projects that they can really get involved in and realize um, that there's more to life than survival. So that's my inclination for it. Commissioner Maddox. Thank you. And, and, and maybe this thing boils down to votes or who has votes or who doesn't. But I appreciate what Mike said. What's important to him in his district um, and what people want in his district is important to him versus what Commissioner McKinnon would, would want. And I, and I second that because when I bring issues forward or or programs forward I'm told that there's no capacity they don't have the money to run it and if we don't give them money will they be able to sustain themselves I'm told that constantly and so when I hear this conversation I appreciate it and I appreciate the passion 
um, that Commissioner Philbrook spoke with and Kane spoke with, but but I'm hoping that we understand this as a commission as, as we just turned down the village initiative and one of the reasons was that they didn't have the capacity had they not had the grant. And then we come and talk about the fair and then we mention, okay, well, let's try to find the money. That that's the same issue that we'll continue to be faced with. And so maybe it does boil down to, to, to votes or whatever be the case, but I'm passionate about certain things just like everybody else is passionate about certain things. And hopefully we can understand that our budget um, is bare bones and that we have to move forward in the, with the best priorities of the community. So thank you. Okay, so there is some difference of opinion, <laughs> which is fine. I, I do think we owe it, this is my personal opinion, I think we owe it to the fair, a historic organization within our community to fully vet out their proposal and bring back a development agreement where we can vote on numbers and not just on passion. And so I think that's going to be the bottom line because at the end of the day, if there was something that was a zero on our, on our community survey, but it made us money, we would do it. Well, because money is high on our survey, right? Um, but I think, I think I do agree that um, the community survey is a great way to vet some of these issues. Um, so I think we do, I think, the, I think the fair has earned a, a place at the table through their 100 years plus of operation and an opportunity to um, have a full development agreement vetted by our staff that can be brought forward for us to decide. Ultimately, it's going to come to a vote up or down if we're going to do the development agreement, and it's going to depend on the numbers, right? So I feel like we can do that. The other piece is I've not heard a groundswell yet for adding operational money to go back to a previous years right now. Unless, unless I'm hearing differently, I'm not hearing um, someone. To, I've heard Commissioner Walker say very clearly he'd like to add funding this year to their operation. Um, Commissioner Philbrook, I believe, is in the same place. Um, we would need to identify a source of that revenue. Um, and I've not heard that from others. So I think we're, I mean, I think we're at a place of closure right now in terms of this of this conversation um i want i think mayor if we're gonna if we're gonna can you speak take, directly into the microphone please if we're gonna take that position i think everybody should vote one way or the other make their position clear to the public where they stand on giving an additional and so we're clear we're not talking about my initial proposal in terms of dollars we're talking about an additional seventy two thousand dollars correct give or take we already give 100. If we went back to 2010, that'd be about 50,000 more. So 50,000 more, okay. So we're talking about a $50,000 number. I think everybody should vote, vote where they feel on it. And I don't, I don't believe for a minute we can't come up with 50 grand. So I'm, I've already, I don't know whether you want formal motion or just a statement of position. Well, let's start with the statement of position and see what the will of I want is. the 50,000. Okay. Commissioner McKiernan. My only request would be, we've achieved structural balance on the county side this year in your original proposed budget. I just want to know where that 50 is coming from. If we can do that and see where the 50 is coming from and decide that's a good move, then I would support it. If we, we need to, I think we need to maintain that structural balance. If we can do that and the move that it takes to get there looks like a good move that where the pros outweigh the cons, I'd go with that. But until I see that move, I can't say. Can we add in that 50000 for the village, village initiative? <laughs> We've changed fund about funds now. <laughs> Commissioner Markley. I'll go, and then we can keep it moving around the table. Um, for me, if we could find 50000 additional dollars in our budget, um, I don't think that this would be the place that I would spend it. So the answer is no. <laughs> okay, we could take a straw poll right now. And the, the issue would be this. If we wanted to have $50,000 go towards a fair, we would instruct the administrator and his staff to go back and find it. Or if we didn't want the $50,000 to go to the fair this year, we would instruct them to not go back and find it. 
Aren't that, they already getting 100000 you said? They're already getting $100,000 a year. Correct. So it would be to increase them from $100,000 to $150,000 a year. Every year? Well, we can only, we're only budgeting 2015. Okay. So we're only voting on 2015's budget. Commissioner Kane. Doug, do you think you can find a $50,000 or not? <laughs> You're up, buddy. You know, I mean, the county budget is a $50 million budget. You know, the, the options that I would have, I mean, one, can reduce, reduce the fund balance. If I stay away from that, then I would just go through and take a little bit out of everybody else's budget in order to make it, in order to get there. And that's an option we can do, too. We fund other outside agencies, or we fund um, several departments within, and that, that's how we have to get it. I have to take it from somewhere in order to do it. So spreading it out a little bit over the area is probably, probably be the one option we'd look at. Commissioner Townsend, are you raising your hand? I guess. <laughs> this is coming around. Um, I wanted to be clear about how much money this is coming down to in a year and for years further. I guess 50000 or 80000 or whatever the number can always be found, but I think it goes again back to the work this commission has been moving toward since I've been on it to really do an analysis and put priorities. Not that this isn't a great thing to have, but is it an essential? There are things that we have yet to address that are must. And I think you heard me say this even with the T-bones. I am glad they're here, but doing that analysis, is this something you know, that you have to have public safety, you have to have, you know, weeds cut, you have to have, you know, emergency uh, equipment that we're talking about millions of dollars. I don't think that this is the right time based on the forecast I've seen for this year and even 2016. Um, we can always, I guess, find some money but I would like to see us more structurally sound and stable um, and not use money if taxes have to be raised, heaven forbid, for a really <coughs> non-essential, not that it wouldn't be great to have. I've been to the fair, I like the fair, but that's how I'm looking at it. Okay, so I think we can go ahead and do an informal vote. And my reasoning for that is we don't make a formal vote until we adopt the budget. And we adopt the budget with a single vote. So this would be a vote to simply identify if there's a consensus upon in the commission, and I would say a majority in the commission, to have the administrator go back and find that $50,000 for the fare. So the proposal's on the table. There's been a request um, made. And so I think we just go around and vote. And if it votes, if there's six votes to send it to the administrator, we do so and he comes back with an amended recommendation, if there's not six votes, then we don't. Does that right, seem, right, right. is there a consensus to do that process? Commissioner? Yeah, so I just had a suggestion. So if we're gonna look at the- Can you talk directly into the microphone, please? Good Lord. Um, okay, so, um, so I appreciate what Commissioner Kane is saying, and, and I hope I'm making my position very clear. I'm not against the fair. It comes down to how much it costs, and I think Administrator Bach put it perfectly. It's gonna have to come from somewhere else. Um, I think Mike heard that. So what, um, since we're looking at the fair collectively, um, if this additional $50,000 that they want annually, I instead of reviewing it for this year, could we wrap that around with the development um, review? When you begin the development review, if there's a way to get them more cash annually as part of the development agreement, at that time, could you look at that? instead of allocating an additional $50,000 now? I would say that's certainly possible. That okay. if, so. if we don't choose to put it in this year's budget, then there's always a way that they can request okay. again the money, and they could certainly do it within this economic development proposal that they have. I just thought for the purposes of tonight, we needed to separate these two issues. Yeah. Commissioner Kane? I think Ann's right. I think if we can... If we don't have to make that decision today and we can kind of wrap it into what's going on, 
then I think we just push forward and let Doug come back and see, tell us what he has. Because by then, he'll have some time to look to see where he can get the monies. Because right now, it's easy to say, I think I can get the monies. Are you talking about the development agreement that he's going to bring forward in the next few months? Yes. yes. That's what I'm, t I'm talking about. Instead of shooting from the hip and making a, a snap decision here at the last minute of the last hour of our budget, taking a more in-depth look, making it part of the development agreement, it doesn't get a money this year but it does set them up in a better position for the following year and provide the commission more information. Walker. We're not even, t the, the issue is for next year. This year's already gone. They're not going to get any additional funding for 2014. I, I mean for, fi I mean, I'm sorry, Hal, let so me be clear. We're, then we're pushing it back to 2016. We're killing it. They can't even hire employees to manage it. There's nobody out there full time because $77,000 does not go very far. We have had more than ample presentation and opportunity for anyone that cared about the issue to look at it and examine it. We're killing it with uh, a slow strangle. And I would just soon save the 70, to be honest with you, I'd just soon save the $77,000 out of this budget. And just, if you, if you don't think the fair is important to the community, important enough in the priorities from the survey, then vote to kill it. Let it go private or let it just disappear and save the $77,000 and put it back in the budget. That's the stand you ought to take. And that way we can put $77,000 into some other more important issue. I just think that's where what I'm hearing here. It's not important enough to outright kill or support, but it is, we'll just kind of strangle it to death. They can't make it on that kind of money. You couldn't do a business on that kind of money either and run any kind of operation and have a fancy gate to drive through with employees greeting you. I mean, I'm all f I'm, I want them to do this. I want to be able to have that the way that we, we need it. And we haven't even talked about the park that they're dedicating to the city out there, the pocket park, that I think is going to be important to the people out in that district because they don't have a park. I won't speak for that district. Not important? No, they don't have a park. Yeah. So I, I'm all for the best use of our money. I want to be on the record with that. But if this, if the fair is not a good use of money for the entertainment, I mean, we can't live like we're Soviets, you know? And all we worry about is uh, bricks and mortar and cutting weeds. And I mean, come on, we got to have things for the family and entertainment. And, but if we want to live like Soviet collectives, I mean, for crying out loud, we can't kill everything. All right, I've, I'm done. Either, as far yeah, as I'm concerned, we, we, if we don't kill it, it's going to die on, on $77,000 anyway. Commissioner Walters. I, I'm not an expert on financing of county fairs, but uh, I was just at the Douglas County Fairgrounds recently, <clears throat> and they have a, a very nice new building on their fairgrounds campus or that was privately gifted to the fair so there are a lot of opportunities for income and, and financial support to a fair beyond taxpayer money um, I do th believe that Johnson County funds their fair to the tune of eighty nine thousand dollars a year so what is being proposed is that we would be paying maybe twice as much each year to support our fair than our neighbors in Johnson County. So it seems to me that there should be some facts and figures and some reflection on this and, and some prioritization more so than we can just give it tonight. I understand that we just had information, the information of the background study that our staff has done is available now. Is that right, Mr. Levin? Yes, Mayor. All right. Um, with you fear want us to review that right now? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, Mayor. <laughs> so I just got it off the phone. <laughs> this is hot off the presses. <laughs> I just got it. All right. So let me ask where the commission is at. Commissioner Walker, are you are you want you had made the request that we vote on up or down whether or not the increased fifty thousand dollars was to come in? Do you want that vote taken? Personally, 
I want to take it. I'll okay. Give you the sense so the public knows where everybody's at. Fair enough. As it were, fair enough. So we're going to go ahead and take a vote. The recommendation is to add an additional $50,000. And what we're going to do is we're going to direct the county administrator, if there are six votes, to go find it. Right? We understand the task at hand. All right. Um, Ms. Cobbins, I'd ask you to do a roll call. Roll call. Walter? No. Delbrook? Yes. Walter? Yes. That is a no. 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 Kane? Doesn't that matter anyway, does it? Yeah. You need to vote. No, oh, don't there be other people behind and kill it anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Aye. Is that a yes? Yes. Markley? No. It voted no six to three. So the funding at this point remains at the current level, which is $77,000 plus ribbons. I would ask the administrator to at least round that up to an even $100,000 in the budget and have it clear that that payment includes the, the prize, the reimbursable prizes, so we don't have two different funds moving that we just have the one. Are people comfortable with that? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, that completes our conversation. I would ask, um, if Mr. Levin, if you would pass around the information about the fair, um, the research that you've done. Clearly, we're going to want to review that as that development agreement comes to us uh, later this year, um, as we continue, as we will continue this dialogue. All right, we are now ready um, to switch gears to public transportation. And for public transportation, I will ask Assistant County Administrator Gordon Criswell to begin the presentation. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we've got uh, Justice Welker, who's the uh, Director of Transit, uh, and uh, assisted by uh, Mr. Lindsay, our Budget Director. They, and uh, if you guys are ready, um, you can... Uh, step us through uh, our public transportation. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners and Doug and Gordon. I'd like to start with some potential good news here and talk about some UG Transit highlights. Uh, September, late September of last year, we opened our new 47th Street Metro Center at 47th and State Avenue. Our recent numbers indicate that we're averaging about 5,000 passengers through that area on any given weekday. We're averaging about 2,000 per Saturday and about 500 per Sunday. We also opened our 7th Street Transit Center in August of last year, and numbers are coming in similar to the 47th Street, just a little bit below that number looking at about 4,000 4, passengers per weekday, about 1,000 per Saturday, and about 500 per Sunday. That's the only Saturday service in our community in addition to the, the new route, and that's the only Sunday service in Kansas. We also uh, implemented enhanced bus service, Connex service on State Avenue. Along with that service, new transit amenities along State Avenue. Just recently, June 30th, we implemented a new transit route connecting Argentina and Rosedale in our community. And just a little number, since 2010, ridership has increased by roughly 19%. A little bit about UG Transit funding, we'll do past <clears throat> versus current. Uh, previously, we relied on federal earmarks, and these were used primarily to purchase buses for our transit department. Buses cost about $80,000 $80, a piece, and in turn, as those buses met their useful life, we would transition those buses to our aging services. We also relied on Federal Highway Administration grants. Those were provided on competitive process implemented by Mid-America Regional Council. We also rely on FTA, Federal Transit Administration grants, and those are implemented through KDOT, Kansas Department of Transportation. There's the Kansas Department of Transportation funding also that comes off the top of state funding directly to transit, local transit agencies in 
Kansas. We also rely on AAA Area Agency on Aging Funding and also local funds. Currently, we don't, we don't get any more money from federal earmarks. They've reduced the, the pork barrel money. That's no longer in service for us. The reduced Federal Highway Administration grants that are, are provided through MARC, since the money is reduced, the competitive process has increased. We're also fighting other municipalities within the Kansas City metro area for those funds. Those are the CMAC funds, the, the FTA funds, the STP funds that are available for transit municipalities. Reduced Federal Transit Administration grants, so you can see a theme there with the reduction in federal money. One thing that has happened is we have received increased KDOT funding here recently, and that is due to our uh, increase in ridership, increase in vehicle transit miles, vehicle miles traveled, and also our population increase. Area Agency on Aging Funding has kind of remained constant throughout the past several years, and uh, internal local funds have gone up due to the decrease in federal monies. I'm going to let Reggie speak about the financial overview. The current slide provides a financial overview of our transit programs. We have the transit program, which is provided by the KCATA Transit Association, and also uh, transit provided by our local unified government. And then we also have Dalaray, which is provided by the unified government, and then also the aging program, which is provided by the unified government. Now you can see we have the passenger fare for each of those. Sir, can you speak up a little bit? You're very soft spoken. You can see we have the passenger fare for each of those, and then we also have the expenditure amount and also the funding sources for our transit programs. Um, below also we have the net amount that we pay out as a unified government, and up in our funding sources we have our federal grants and our state grants, and also our passenger revenue provided by the KCATA, and also the transit and the aging, and also the UG. Dalla ride. In 2014, we, uh, the unified government is going to provide almost $6 million, and in 2015, we forecast to provide almost $6.5 million from our own budget. Any questions about this slide? This slide right here particularly breaks out the KCATA contract. Uh, the KCATA runs our new transit routes for us, the ones that you see running up and down state, the new Connex routes, and also the new Rosedale routes. Uh, it's funding provided by state and federal grants and also passenger revenue. Uh, you can see from 2011 to the 2015 forecast, our funding uh, in 2011 that the unified government provided was $2 million, and now in, in our 2015 forecast, we're estimated to provide three million dollars. <coughs> Any questions on this slide? I'll turn it back over to Justice. To speak about our capital needs a little bit, we'll start with the AAA fleet. As I mentioned previously, AAA buses came from federal earmarks. We, we handed those buses down from our transit program to the AAA. Remind us again, AAA. Area Agency on Aging. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, we have two refrigerated trucks, one that provide cold meals on wheels, and we delivered 46,000 cold meals during 2013. We have four minivans which deliver hot meals on wheels. We delivered 61,000 meals in 2013. We have five buses that operate our congregate meal service as well as, as, well as our demand response. Congregate meals, we fed 15,000 individuals at three sites within the county. Our demand response, we offered rides to 15,000 individuals within the county. Bus replacement as vehicles reach their useful life, this goes back to the, the lack of earmarks and the funding required to, to purchase new buses as they meet their useful life. We don't have a large enough fleet that we can dedicate one bus for each service. We have to be flexible. So on any given day, one bus can operate an area agency on aging route. The following day could be in a transit route. just shows the necessity of the vehicle replacement to continue to operate those services. So in conclusion, our ridership is increasing. We reach, we reach 1.4 million riders <coughs> in state fiscal year 2014. 
Our population is aging. Uh, we've all heard that 10,000 people will turn 65 each day. That's going to a demand for increased aging services in our community. We are required to, to put in more, federal, more local dollars due to the decrease in federal money. And again, I'd like to touch on the capital needs for the, the area agency on aging, aging vehicles as we don't have a dedicated funding mechanism for those vehicles and it requires general funds to purchase those vehicles to operate those aging services. Administrator Bach. Thank you, Mr. Welker, Mr. Lindsay. I think what um, kind of comes from the conclusion of this is we've done a great job in expanding transit and making it a better operation in our community, but the decrease in funding that's happened, particularly in this area, as Justice concluded in talking about our fleet replacement, is one that traditionally in our capital line, as we came down here and looked at area agency, which is a county funded operation um, versus the, the city funded operations. But we haven't had to go out and buy buses as a county to go into these um, AAA programs because we were able to cycle them down from the other buses we were getting grants for. I'm going to have to get that built in to our county budget in future years. Um, so we're recognizing that expense as something because the other buses are just, we're wearing them out. So they're not really in that rotation cycle. Um, and, and so it's both on the city end and the county end. We're going to have to see that in future years. Um, it's not there yet, but as you all know, we really don't have that same kind of capital plan built in for the county. We have a large list at the end of our book where all the county items are unfunded. You know, we put a radio project in and had to come back, get additional funding to go to it. So. That's an area that we're going to have to build out that same type of capital plan for items like this, like we do. Um, and I know we do have some things from the sheriff's budget. We fund a lot of that from cash items, such like that, or we do the lease. These are bigger items, so we have to look at it a little bit different way. So it's, it's future challenges. But I want to say overall, our program has been very successful. We've got people who are doing a great job. He has a lot of great people that work in transit. And we're, we get a lot of positive feedback about the direction of where transit's going and how many opportunities we provide. And I think just the list of meals we provide around to our elderly population and, and the transportation to the different sources shows its value in the community. Commissioner McKiernan and then Maddox. You know, I really appreciate this and I've learned quite a bit more from Mr. Welker and Mr. Cross over the last year about this. And one of the things that I didn't realize was how small a fraction of total um, operating expenses passenger fares actually bring in. And this is an item that our constituents through our surveys have said is a high priority. So that puts a lot back on us to make sure that we can fund it to the level knowing that only 15 to 17 percent of the money we need to operate the system comes through passenger fares. So that is, I think, a big challenge for us. Another thing that you may not be everybody may not be familiar with is we really do almost a half and half with K the Kansas City Area Transportation Authority. They operate about six and a half routes in our city and we operate the other four and a half routes in our city. So they remain a wild card in this. It's hard to predict what we're going to need, but it's also hard to predict what our funding obligation is going to be to KCATA in the future. So we do have a couple of wild cards at play in this that we need to keep track of. And certainly what I've seen is the federal money available is going way down, even as the Regional Transit Coordinating Council uh, lobbies for more money for transit, the total pie is shrinking. So even if we get a bigger percentage of that total pie, it may be less actual dollars. So I think that our citizens have said transit is very important. But I agree with Mr. Welker and Mr. Bach. This is going to be an area that will challenge us significantly in the coming few years. And I think we should really be very proactive about anticipating cost increases over time, and especially the capital costs, as we go to um, replace our current buses. So I really appreciate this information. It's great. But I just do think we've got quite a challenge ahead of us to continue to fund this to the level that we want to. And I would note, the administrator is recommending 
spending a half million dollars more in 15 than 14, reflecting those priorities, reflecting the additional route we took on with the 105 and absorbing that in the southern part of our city. So this does show an increased expenditure on our side as a result of our increased, um, the increased demand. Commissioner Maddox and then Commissioner Philbrook. Thank you. My question was simply, um, what is the volume on the weekend for the downtown buses, um, one oh, the Minnesota bus and the Quindaro bus ver versus availability? Uh, we're looking at the ridership indicates, you know, we're about on any given weekend day, Saturday, about 2,000 riders per day. And how many buses are available? Uh, there's going to be two buses available. Two? Mm -hmm. on that, that's on the Connect service, provide service about every 30 minutes. Okay. Um, and I asked that because I, was, I had the uh, privilege of meeting with uh, some of the residents at the Crossline Towers, and they mentioned, it was just three days ago, they mentioned that often they have to wait for maybe two buses, sometimes three, before they can board a bus to get to their destination. So I understand that the capacity um, or, or a ridership far outweighs the availability, and, and I don't know what we can do or what are the possibilities that we have to rearrange some things or fix some things, but I mean, that's, to me, that's just crazy on the weekend that some people have to sit at the bus stop for an hour and 30 minutes before they can board a bus, and some of those people are elderly who take medicine and, and wheelchairs and, you know, things of that nature, so. Thank you. Commissioner Philbrook. Yes, I was looking here on page 213 when we were talking about um, capital equipment. And so 2014 shows in our budget 120,000. And the amended went down to 10,000. And then our budget for 2015 shows 35,000. Is that reflecting buses? What is that reflecting, that capital amount? There, there are uh, four vans in the, in the 2015 proposed budget and then also one bus in okay. the 2015 proposed budget. Thank you. Okay. I, I, I guess, and, and, and back to what I said, Doug, is there a way that we can possibly fluctuate some dollars or, or routes that we may be able to, to better accommodate the people on Saturday? Is that a possibility or am I way out of it? I don't want to leave. <laughs> you know, I, I would probably have to look to my experts on this, but I don't want to think I think you, we could look, we can continue to look at it and see. Um, and, and I guess it's kind of like our last discussion. Um, it would be an evaluation of where we would want to redirect the funding. So we do something and that's probably what you're, you're asking me to look at is moving a priority of something that happens during the week or in a different area and saying can we move that funding or that driving or whatever to the weekend route at a similar cost and make something like that work and and we try to continue to evaluate throughout the year we're not just static and say this is what it is and we're never going to change it um but but i'd have mr welker take a look at that and see as i know he does but maybe we can give a little extra emphasis on that and come back to um i think you're on the uh Public Works Committee anyway and it'd be something we could come back and just talk about overall performance on the different transit routes and where our ridership is and what's going on and that would be an analysis we could probably I mean we have that information so we could show what the ridership is in the different areas and give you those examples and then then you could weigh in on it. so why don't we plan on that for a future standing committee that'd be a good opportunity to look at that. Uh, Mr. Bach uh, I just I hear what you're saying, but just a point of clarification while Justice is preparing to do his analysis. Uh, Commissioner, I'm looking for clarification from you because when you say, can we take a look at some existing routes that, that we have, I'm assuming that you mean we have to make sure we look at that route.